Hi, my name is Paul Grogan and welcome to episode 28 of the Gaming Rules podcast. In this show, I'm going to try something a little different, which you'll see later on. I've also got Ignacy Trevishek on the show as a special guest, and not just one, but two competitions. I know, right? So before we start, I just wanted to thank those people that have contributed to the various discussions going on at the BGG Guild. If you are a listener and you use Board Game Geek, then please join the Guild, subscribe and join in the discussions. There's been one very interesting one recently about whether reviewers can ever be objective with their reviews of games, which was cool to get lots of opinions on from different people. So the Guild is over on Board Game Geek, Guild number 2258, and if you're not sure how to join, just let me know. I've also started putting these podcasts on YouTube as a bit of an experiment. The YouTube version is enhanced in the way that I add images of the games that I'm talking about, but basically it's now taking me even more time to edit this and create the show, and I'm not sure if it's actually worth it or not, so I'm, I'd be interested in hearing what you think. If you do watch this show on YouTube rather than download the podcast, and you prefer that as a medium, then please let me know via the Board Game Geek Guild. Thanks as always to the sponsors of the show, Gameslaw, the UK's largest specialist games retailer at gameslaw.com. And speaking of Gameslaw, you may remember from podcast 26, I ran a competition to win £30 worth of games, which myself and Gameslaw went 50-50 on. We announced the winner last time, and he's recorded a short message to say what he won. Here's Geraint. Hi, this is Geraint from Going Halves on Games, and I was the lucky winner of the competition from the last podcast for £30 worth of vouchers to Gameslaw. Um, initially I wanted to get myself a nice meaty Euro, but decided to go for a family game for everybody, so got a great copy of Steampunk Rally. We haven't played it yet, but hoping to get it to the table on a family game night very soon. So thank you very much to Paul from Gaming Rules and Paul from Games Law for the competition. I'm really looking forward to playing it. Thanks guys. What Paul has played. So this is the first part of the show where I'm going to try something different and I really want to have your feedback on this, preferably via the BGG Guild so that it's all in one place. Now, I personally much prefer listening to other people's podcasts when there's two people talking together rather than just one person. And even though a lot of you have said that you enjoy this podcast, I personally think it would be better if it wasn't just me rambling on. So I'm going to experiment in this episode with a co-host. Now, I'm not sure whether this is going to work or not, because I want to keep the podcast short, um, and it's going to take me even longer to edit them, but I'm going to try anyway. So, joining me in this week's section is Efka from the No Pun Included show. Welcome, Efka. Hello, Paul. Hello, listeners. Glad to be on the podcast. And before we start, just tell the people, just tell the listeners who you are and what you do. Um, well, I am a board game reviewer, and together with my wife Elaine, we review board games on YouTube, and we have our own channel where we do funny videos, and I, at least I hope people think they're funny, um, and that's pretty much it, really. Yep, and that's the No Pun Included No show. Pun Included, yeah, if you search that on uh, YouTube, a lot of people often say No Pun Intended, and yeah. I kind of I kind of have a chuckle inside, and then I correct them. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, moving on to the games that I've played. The first one I want to talk about is Discoveries, otherwise known as the Lewis and Clark The Dice Game, which I've been given a review copy of for Mestivium Games, and I am planning to do a review video of this, hopefully in February. Now... I've played this three times so far, and I've got a big problem for, for when I'm actually going to do the review, because the two reviews that I've done so far, the format that I'm following is that I go through the basic rules of the game, then I talk about the things that I liked about it, then I talk about the things I dislike about it, and then I give a summary. And so far, in this game, I have absolutely nothing about it that I don't like. Um, well, Discoveries always looked really interesting to me, but I've never actually played it. And there's this really, really lovely box sitting at my job. Uh, I work at a comic book shop. Uh, and I, every day I go to work, I keep looking at it. And I was like, I really want to buy this. Yeah. Uh, but So, Paul, tell me what's, what's cool about Discoveries? For what it is, it's fine. Now, it's not a particularly heavy game. It's not a, it's not a light game. It's not a gateway game. It's probably one step up from that. But the gameplay is nice, the length is nice, the theme is nice, the way the scoring works is nice, the components are nice, and that's it. I'm not saying it's like the best game ever, but if you accept the game going into it as, right, this is going to be an hour, hour and a bit, a sort of light to medium game, here it is. I've now demoed it to probably about, oh, I don't know, about 10 people, and everybody's liked it so far. I'm really enjoying playing it. It has got enough stuff going on. The mechanics are interesting, the way that the dice move between the different players because when you when you use your dice they go onto the main board 
and then when it, when a player rests, they can pick up what are, were effectively your dice from the board and use them themselves. But then when you rest, you get them back, and the dice move around between the players. So there's a nice little bit of interaction. Yes, yeah, and and it's looking at the other players. So if you've got if I take loads of your dice, for example, mm -hmm. just before, and I'm looking at your board and I can see you're about to rest, then there's not much point doing that because I'll take them and then before I get to use them, you'll take them as well. But if you do it at the right time, you can get some uses out of, out of the other player's dice. But yeah, it works quite nicely. That's what I like about like Euros, you know, watching what other people do and kind of working your strategy based around that. Yeah, so anyway, I'll be, I'll be telling more about that when I do the, the full review. Next up is Traders of Osaka, which I've mentioned a couple of times on this podcast before. It's such, it's such a, a game with really simple rules, but it's mind exploding. It's just trying to work out the end result of the actions that you take. And that action is really simple. It's you either, right, do this, which is what? Pick up a card and put it in your hand. That's it. The rules are really simple, but working out, as I say, the consequences of your actions and how you actually win the game. I don't know if you've played this yet. I have not played it yet. Right. Although, again, another game on my radar. Yes. So everybody's, everybody's enjoying this. I won the game that we played, but I don't... To say that I won it without lack of skill sounds like it's a bad game the other players were definitely screwing each other over and there was a lot of banter at the table and <laughs> i was kind of not getting involved in that i mean I, I have had the experience of playing it before so there are some things some little tricks that i didn't know but yeah I, it's a game which i i don't think i'll tire of playing again not because it's you know amazing but for the length of time and and as i say the brain power involved in it it's it, it's quite nice so moving on to Orleans, or Orleans, or however you want to pronounce it, I've played my second game of this, this time with the correct rules, because we got a few wrong last time, and Orleans was one that I was on the fence about, and I'm happy that um, Games Lord did give me a copy for Christmas, thank you very much again, because I'm really enjoying it. Now you have played this, haven't you? Afghan? I have indeed, actually. Yes. It's uh, the game that we're going to review for our Jack oh, Vassal right. Memorial Fund uh, review auction. So we had an auction item where we'll do a review for someone of a game that they want, and then we'll send it to them. And now, so I know I have to send this game away, but me and Elaine both really like it. And we've also played it twice. And there are two some player? two player once, okay. and I've played it as a four player game once. Okay. Um, I've played it four player. Yeah, just, just four player twice. Yeah, there are some problems with it, but they aren't very big problems. And the rest does make it quite enjoyable. I think my problem, my biggest problem with Orleans is that some of the tiles you can buy that let you do extra actions are just completely useless. Like, why would you ever buy the guy that makes cheese, you know? Um, there's just no point because you're never going to amass as many victory points from that tile as from others. Okay. But, but aside from things like that, you know... Um, I, I really, really strongly enjoyed the game. Yeah, I mean, the mechanics, I, I just really liked the mechanics, the way that it worked. I, I, my only problem with it, and this is, it's happened in both of my games so far, is the plague came out on round two. And when the plague comes out, I mean, yes, you see it beforehand, which is great. You sort of take a chance. You go, right, well, I, I could play this turn, taking into account that the plague is going to happen, and make sure the only people in my bag are my own, which means then nobody dies. But by doing that, you, especially when it happens right at the start of the game, you're hurting your engine building. So what I find most people do is they, they buy a person, put him in the bag, and take that one in three or one in four chance that somebody's going to die. But in the last two times I've played it, it's happened to one player. So right by the end of turn two, just at the start of the game, one player is already quite far behind. And we are talking about possibly a slight tweak house rule just to just to stop somebody getting behind early on. Um, I mean, that's only a fairly minor criticism of the game. And, you know, if the plague doesn't come out early and it doesn't happen to you, you're not going to see that problem. But, um, yeah, it's really, really enjoyable game. Yeah, uh, I think people uh, that enjoy, and I know you didn't agree with this comparison, but I think people that enjoy Agricola will possibly like Orleans because it has a similar feeling of tightness you know uh, you have to plan your actions really really well and there's a limited number of rounds and to boot the artist is the same. Next game we played was Mysterium. Uh, now I've played Mysterium in the past with two people playing the ghost. This happened I'd arranged a game and then unforeseen circumstances happened and nine people came round. And it was like, oh, well, we all really want to play Mysterium. So I'll tell you what, let's have my mum and dad were a team together and me and Vicky, we played the ghost together. 
and it worked. And we both felt that we enjoyed the game better playing the ghost together rather than if one of us had played it on their own. So last Friday, when people came around to play Mysterium, there was eight of us. So Mark and Doug together played the ghost. And they said it really worked for them. They were they were whispering, you know, behind the shield, and we, we couldn't hear what they were saying. <laughs> but it, it did work. So I would recommend trying it if you've got a big enough group of people. Our game, we actually completed the whole thing and got it right, I think, on hour four, maybe five. It's the quickest time we've ever done it. We were playing on the easy setting. So next time we play with them, we'll we'll up the difficulty setting. But yeah, that was that was a really good game. For those people that don't know, I play Mysterium with the Ukrainian rules, which are by far the best set of rules in, in my opinion. And I agree as well on that. Yeah, so if you want to know more about the difference between the Ukrainian rules and the Polish rules and the English rules, then drop me a message on Board Game Geek or, or look up the details there. I just really want to play Mysterium as a two ghost, co-ghost, co-ghost. Yeah. I am the co-host and the co-ghost. See, that's brilliant. And I just, re I just heard about it for the first time and I'm like, yeah, I really want to do this. Yeah, I mean, for me, um, it removed the level of stress that I feel when I'm playing the ghost that, oh my God, I've got all of this going on and it's all down to me. And I'm not great at that sort of thing anyway. So playing it with somebody else, yeah, it, it, it was just an, it was a more enjoyable experience. So moving on to the next game, which is Imperial Settlers. Now, I got Imperial Settlers when it came out at Essen. I played it a few times and it was quite nice, but for me, I felt that it was it was far too random for me to be classed as a sort of real strategy game. And even though most, most other people were saying how amazing a game it was, and oh, it's an amazing strategy game, and this, that, and the other, we were playing it, and we had the feeling that the players who were winning were generally doing so because they were lucky enough to get the card combos out. And even the people who won were sort of saying that. So I kind of went a bit off the game, but... I've recently started to play more of it now, and I can now see that there is there is a bit more to it than I thought, and I am enjoying the games. I still do think the look level is a bit high. I'd prefer a little bit more, a little bit more control over the cards that you get. For example, you know, at the start of the game, you start with two cards from your own deck and two cards from the neutral deck, and that's it. I, I, for, for me, I play with uh, choose two from three or choose two from four, just to give you a little bit of choice at the start, because certain cards can be just better or worse for you at the start of the game. It's been a while since I played Imperial Settlers, and I think uh, the reason is that I got really burned by a four-player game that just took on way too long than it should yeah. have. Regardless, I still do really like the game, and I agree it is random to a certain degree, but I don't mind card games to be that as long as they don't last two hours. And you know, Ignacy himself has said it's just a two-player game. Yeah. It's, it's just a two-player game. It's, it just says on the box two to four, but it's a two-player game. Yeah, if you've got four people, split into two groups and, and play it. So I've been playing it with a friend of mine, Mark, and we've just been playing two-player, and, you know, that's like 30 to 40 minutes, which is fine. You know, that, that's a good length. And this, my, my, my thoughts about Imperial Settlers apply to another card game, Baseball Highlights 2045, which, for those people who've listened to the earlier podcasts, um, will know that I really struggled with the rules of this game to the point where we... We tried to play it from the rules and we, were, we ended up giving up. We couldn't actually play the game. And it's another one which almost everybody is saying how amazing it was. Best game of last year or... Yeah, a lot of people really like this game. Loving it. A lot of people are loving it. And I was playing it and I was like, I'm not getting this. What, 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 what is it that I'm missing? But uh, the aforementioned Mark, I took baseball highlights round to his and we played a few games. And at this point, because I've, I've put in a little bit of effort now and I've read the FAQs and I've watched Mike Fitzgerald's Learn How to Play videos, which are really good. Uh, and all of a sudden, I went there armed with, right, I now know how to play this game. So there's not going to be any queries about the rules. And we'll actually be able to just play the game and enjoy the game. And I did really enjoy it. So I think I've sort of come round. I'm not saying it's, oh my God, best game ever or, or best game of last year. But I am enjoying my plays of it now. and I do want to play more of it. I remember you mentioning that um, there is a certain downside to not actually knowing how to play baseball. Do you still feel that? Um, it's tricky because I, I thought maybe it's my knowledge of baseball that is preventing me. So the rules for the clutch, for example. Now, I don't know what a clutch is. I assume it's a baseball term and those people that know baseball will know what a clutch is. Rather but than just that thing in the car. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when you play clutch and it then tells you what to do, I'm like... That's not really clear. I don't, 
I don't really know what it is to do. Maybe if I understood baseball, I would actually know what that does. I'm now thinking, no, that, that's just a word. You know, what the actual effect of that is, that's the bit that wasn't clear. But yeah, now that I've read the rules in the FAQ, now when somebody plays a clutch card and it tells you what to do, I'm like, oh yeah, that does this, this, and this. So it, it, the game is now a lot, it's playing a lot smoother and it's a lot better because, because I'm not having to stumble with the rules all the time. And the gameplay is actually quite nice. And again, it's another game which I think is really just a two-player game, but it plays quickly and yeah, it, it works really well. I haven't played it myself yet, but a lot of people, like I said before, really, really like this game, and I'm sure I'll end up playing it at some point. Yeah, it's worth, it's worth giving it a go. So speaking of baseball highlights, for those people who don't know, it's just come out as an app. The app's been in development for a while, and it's just come out in the last few weeks. And the first competition for this episode is that you can win a copy of the app. So to do so, what you need to do is you need to email me the answer to the following question, which is in Baseball Highlights 2045, there are three types of players. I'll give you one of them, which is a natural. There are two other types of players, and if you can email me the two other types of players, uh, then I will enter you, to, uh, enter you into the competition, and the winner will win a copy of the app. The email address to use is gaming-rules at outlook.com. That's gaming-rules at outlook.com. And I'll pick the winner just before the next show so that you've got until Friday the 12th of February to uh, email me your answer. Paul, if you could just uh, message me those answers privately, I'll send yep. you an email as soon as possible. Um, <laughs> so that's it for the What's Played section. That's what I've been up to. Thank you for joining me, Efka, and for contributing to it. Oh, it was a pleasure. And remember, if you, if you prefer this section, if you're listening to the show and you prefer this section with a co-host, let me know. Uh, I, might, uh, I, might, I might do it again, I might get a different co-host on every week, or I might just get Efka back every week. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, thanks very much. Please upvote me, I don't want to lose my job. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Gaming Rules News. I'm only going to talk about one thing in this section, even though I've been up to lots as usual, and that is the videos that I've done for Vinyos, which are completed last week, and they went live on Friday, just gone. Vinyos is a game by designer Vital Lacerda, and I've had the privilege of working with him on a few games now. Vinyos originally came out in 2010, and for me, it was the game that put him on the map as a designer, and made me take notice of What's Your Game, who were the original publisher, because of the, the art style of the game and the general production quality. Vital is launching a new version of Vinyos with Eagle Griffin Games now, and it will be a super deluxe one, similar to what they did with the Gallerist last year. I've done three videos for the game, a short trailer video using fancy digital 3D animations, a full rules video, and a short what's changed in this version video. I'm really happy with the rules video and how it turned out. I'm still surprised I managed to get over the full rules of the game in about 23 minutes, as it is a pretty heavy game, although the new version is more streamlined. Anyway, if you want to see the videos, they're live on YouTube and BGG now, and if you're interested in backing the game, the Kickstarter is running right now. Guest. I'm very grateful to my special guest this week for taking time out from his very busy schedule to come on the show. Ignacy Trevishet, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for having me. Hello, everybody. Now, you've been extremely busy recently because you've, you've had PortalCon and then you've been off to Nuremberg and you've just got back. Is that right? That, that is true. And in fact, one of my employees is already at the, another convention. He just came from Nuremberg changed the car and went to the another convention. <laughs> so we are in a really very busy period of time. Yeah, because as well as all of these, you know, events and things like that, you know, let's not forget you're running Portal Games. That is true. And you're a games designer. Yeah. So I, I've come up with my own theory that you must have some kind of cloning machine there in order to be able to do everything. The, 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 the whole clue is that I really love my work. So I really work in my work time and in my uh, home time. Yes? Yeah. So I work like two or more times than average people because I love it. So this is very important. So what I do for most guests that come on the show is that I post something to my BGG Guild and I get them to ask lots of questions beforehand. Now, I've not done that with you because you do your own question and answer session on your own video log and you already get enough people asking you lots of questions on there. So I thought I'd, I'd leave the questions for that. So for those people who don't know, you record a, is it a regular vlog or is it semi-regular? Yes, one every single week. One every single week. And you, you have a thing on there where 
where people can ask you questions and you answer them on your show. That is true. Yes. So yeah, if you've got any questions for Ignasi, then then follow. What, go and watch his video log, which is very good, very well produced, and very funny. Uh, and you. ask him any questions on there. So this year, Portal Games. I asked you to come on the show a few weeks ago now to talk about what Portal Games have got planned for 2016. And since I asked you, you've made all the big announcements. So this is a really good time for me to to have you on to talk about it, which wasn't planned. But I'm really grateful of that because you've announced them at PortalCon, is that right? That is true. That is our own event. Uh, we do it twice a year and we gather all our hardcore fans from Poland and we make a huge announcement. We have a keynotes. I'm presenting new releases and then for the whole day people can play these games we just announced. So this is a very fun moment for them. Yeah. So it was only a week or two weeks ago where you, you did this big announcement and one of the things which a lot of people are talking about right now is First Martians, which is the first game I did want to talk to you about because it's getting a lot of a lot of buzz at the moment for for a few reasons. One of them is obviously you, and you're a very popular person, and everything that you announce gets a lot of buzz. But it's also a reimplementation of Robinson Crusoe, which is a very very well respected game. Yes, so the game is based on the basic mechanism of Robinson Crusoe and takes an action to the Mars to the space team and put players on the red planet and they will have to uh, survive on this red planet and so they will have to repair the hub and uh, explore the planet and do all the kind of stuff we know from the sci-fi novels. Yeah, is it is it fair to say that it is just Robinson Crusoe in space or is there a lot more to it than that? Because I think there's a lot more. Of course, so, so of course I'm super excited about the feedback from the players. Um, it started as a, um, a little bit more different game than it is right now from the Robinson Crusoe. So I am during the playtesting and during the creation, I was um, taking away some of the crazy ideas I had and uh, moving towards more Robinson Crusoe because Robinson Crusoe is a rule set that people already know. So yeah. it will be easier for them to just start playing the game. Uh, I had a very interesting um, discussion with my friend Michael Orach, who is designer of Naroshima Hex, for example. Yeah. And uh, I was telling him about the ideas for the first Martians a couple of months ago. And he said, Ignace, don't invent a wheel. Uh, people love Robinson Crusoe. Don't try to be super original. Just do the great game based on the stuff you already invented because people know the game, people know Robinson Crusoe, and they just want the new team. So basically, there's a lot of things that you will. Uh, know from the Robinson Crusoe, starting to play First Martians, but of course there's a lot more because the team makes it uh, so much different, so there will be new rules and new engines put yeah. in the game to show the sci-fi team. Yeah, and one of the things which is different about First Martians is that there is an app which supports the game. That is true, the app is a crucial part of the app for the app. Right, so is, is the app, is it kind of replacing the cards from Robinson Crusoe or is it doing something different? Yeah, so if we can say it in a, the simple way, of course uh, it's not super super true, but the simple way to, to explaining this, uh, the app will take all the event cards and all adventure cards and put it into the smartphone or the tablet. Right. There will be still cards in the game, and they, these cards will be dedicated to the hub and the place where people are the people are living and the, the players will draw these cards and have some problems with the, with the hub. But basically all adventures and all event cards were moved to the app and app will randomly choose them for the players. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm super excited because I, I, and I'm not just saying that because you're on the show, but I like Mars as a theme and colonizing Mars and everything else. And I did like the Robinson Crusoe mechanic. So it's it's certainly on my watch list. Now, when's that going to be out? Are you aiming for Gen Con aiming, or Essen? Yes, we are aiming at Essen di right. this year. So a uh, couple of months more for me to design the game. Yeah, excellent. OK, so the next thing I wanted to talk about is another thing which is, because First Martians was a kind of new announcement. But the yep. other thing is 51st State Master Edition, which has been talked about for quite some time now as, yes. as it was coming out and that's coming out relatively soon you're doing pre-orders right now yes pre-orders are open at portal games uh, website and uh, the, we are aiming at the spring release so ex ex exactly this weekend i run a few last test games with my wife and i think the game is well done and it's absolutely ready to yeah. go to the print so uh, yes we are sending files to the print this week and um, the game will hit the stores in a couple of weeks or months 
Yeah, I mean, one of the things which, because I've been and had a look at it on the website, I actually quite liked the graphic design and the artwork for the original 51st State. But the new one does look gorgeous. The, the card layout and everything about it, it, it just looks really nice. And I, I like that in games. For me, I know it's very shallow, but I enjoy playing a game better if it has nice graphics and nice design and things like that. It just, I don't know, it just adds that little bit extra for me. Absolutely. And uh, I always, in, in interviews, try to, to mention this and explain this. Uh, I have uh, employees, of course, and I have a team and we work every single day on, on games. And as I am designer, as a designer, I'm improving myself. I'm learning. My games are better and better. The same is for my artwork manager, for my movie editor, and and so on and so on. Yeah. So it is no surprise that Fifty First States today looks better than it looked five years ago because yeah. the guy just learned f new tricks. He learned <laughs> how to do. Yes. Yeah, so every every person in the portal games is learning, is getting better, yeah. and we see this in these games. But you're saying, are you saying that that if you're still testing it at the moment? That there are going to be some changes to the game or some tweaks to the game. Yes, there is a there is a lot of the tweak tweaks because uh, I wanted to make this game uh, faster, smoother, uh, without uh, many exceptions, uh, easier to play basically. Okay. So I I changed some rules. I changed the um, the cards in the deck. So in the, this is that's why I called it master set because the, the this this game will consist of eighty eight uh, pre constructed cards for the base set this is a base 51st state and then there is a 50 cards of the new year expansions and 50 cards of the winter expansion and they are well pre-constructed so they so you can shuffle them and and use them so yeah so the new version of 54 state for 51st state then it, it's not just the old cards with new graphic design you, you've actually made quite a few changes to the game itself then yes people will find the new cards and they will find uh, some new mechanism and they will find the game is much faster now yeah Excellent. Okay, uh, and the last one to talk about is Cry Havoc, which has got miniatures in it. This is huge for us. This is like we. Uh, some gamers like to say that Portal Games is like uh, FFG from Europe. So we are doing the sci-fi games, fantasy games, Neuroshima Hex, combat, all that kind of stuff. We are some kind of Ameritrash style game company from Europe. And now we are releasing our first game with miniatures with the four unique factions, huge board, and it is basically playing StarCraft. On the board right. is like uh, recruiting forces, building buildings, and then destroying opponents. Uh, all that kind of stuff people love in video games we put into the game. This game created by Grant Rodiek. I received, uh, he submitted the game to me at Gen Con 2013. I was uh, at Gen Con presenting Robinson Crusoe. I met Grant in the hotel and he submitted me the game. And since then, it is almost three years. We were developing the game, so there is a lot of changes, lots of improvements, and I am super excited. It's like a first true Amaritrash game from Portal Games. Right, and obviously as a publisher, this is the first time you've gone into miniatures. Yeah, this is a very risky business. I hope I hope we will have no problems because we are doing it right now. So we are aiming at Gen Con release. We just met at Nuremberg uh, our um, our manufacturer. He said everything is under control. Do not worry, you will have your game at Gen Con. <laughs> I don't trust them at all. So no. <laughs> we will see in a couple of months if, if, if everything is all right. But you are right, this is like a much bigger challenge. It is not now just cardboard pieces, it is not only wooden pieces. Now we are talking about plastic miniatures, this is a much more difficult operation. And uh, well, I will be having pressure for the upcoming months till the Gen Con release. Yes, well I look forward to seeing you at Gen Con then when you're all relaxed with all the nice miniatures and it's all okay. Uh, that will be awesome, yes. Yes. Uh, and the fourth one that you announced at Portal Con was a box with a question mark on. That is true. Uh, uh, and you will be announcing that? later on this year? We will uh, release uh, a press release at Gamma Trade Show in March. Uh, we thought it would be too much of the press release for the one portal con and we wanted to, mm, yeah. to, to put it uh, in a different terms. This amazing game from the French designer and uh, this is a family game. It is very fun. I love it and we will present it at Gamma. Okay, so I, I was going to I was going to try and get some information out of you, but I didn't think you were going to tell me anything. But you have. You've already given me a hint as to what this game is. Yeah, this is why we do interviews, yeah, so I can tell <laughs> something interesting. Yeah, so excellent. Um, so that you'll be announcing that at the Gamma, and that'll be your fourth game for this year. But that's that's it. Yeah, so we are talking about the big boxes, big box like uh, Imperial Settlers, like uh, Rotel Battle. These are big box games. We have more 
in our catalog of a, for expansions for the games of course so we release more products but the big uh, releases are the four big games yeah excellent okay so before i let you go there's just one more thing to do and that is you've kindly uh, given me a copy of your board games that tell stories to your new book to give away as a prize on the show yep so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the listeners a question, and all you need to do is, if you know the answer to this question, just drop me an email at gaming-rules-at-outlook.com. And this question is actually about the new Master Edition of 51st State, which, as we mentioned earlier on, is available for pre-order right now at the Portal Games website. The question is, how many different types of wooden resource tokens are there? So the game comes with these nice wooden resource tokens, and I want you to just tell me, how many of them there are, drop me the email to gaming-rules at outlook.com before February 12th. I'll put your name into a virtual hat and I'll draw out the winner at the next podcast. So thanks very much for donating a copy of the book and thanks very much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you. And that's everything for Podcast 28. So, as I say, I tried a couple of things different in this episode, and I really would like your feedback to see if you liked it or you didn't like it. I know the show is probably a bit longer than normal, um, but, yeah, very interested to hear what you think. Anyway, thanks again to the sponsors of the show, Games Law, and to Jason Shaw at audionautics.com for all the music used in this podcast. Take care, and thanks for listening.